the name Judas Iscariot is widely recognized in Christian circles as the betrayer of Christ, orchestrating his arrest and crucifixion. Judas, one of the original 12 disciples chosen by Jesus, accompanied him for about three and a half years during his ministry. The Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John specifically label Judas as the one who betrayed Jesus, a traitor among the disciples. Iscariot serves as Judas's surname following the Hebrew tradition where individuals were typically named after their fathers. For instance, Isaac might be called Isaac son of Abraham or Isaac ben Abraham. Judas likely carried his father's name Iscariot, suggesting a possible connection to a location in Kerioth, located in southern Judea. Despite the disciples' apparent commitment to Jesus' message, indications of dishonesty surfaced. Despite being given authority over unclean spirits and the power to heal, Judas, described as a thief, helped himself to the funds entrusted to him. During Jesus' ministry, it was said about Judas, he was a thief and had the money box, and he used to take what was put in it. John 12, 6. Judas, the treasurer of Jesus and his disciples, faced issues of embezzlement, providing context to his later betrayal of Jesus for money. The discreet arrest of Jesus became necessary due to his fame and constant presence among crowds. Jesus' arrest required careful planning to avoid public uproar. At Matthew 21, 45 through 46, for example, we read, Now when the chief priests and Pharisees heard his parables, they perceived that he was speaking of them. But when they looked for opportunity to lay hands on him, they hesitated, fearing the multitudes, because the multitudes took him for a prophet. Judas Iscariot's betrayal was part of God's plan, and Jesus willingly embraced his sacrificial role. Many times Jesus would use the phrase, my time is not yet come, but there was a point in time when Jesus's time did come. Jesus knew of Judas's embezzlement and foresaw him as the one who would betray him. In Jerusalem, just before his arrest, Jesus willingly positioned himself for the events to unfold. Jesus arranged for one last Passover meal in Jerusalem. At Matthew 26, 18, he instructed his disciples, Go into the city to a certain man and say to him, The teacher says, My time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. On the night of his arrest, Jesus, accompanied by his disciples, entered a garden. Judas, having gathered soldiers and officers, betrayed Jesus with a kiss, marking the beginning of the tragic events leading to Christ's crucifixion. Judas likely did not anticipate the severity of Jesus' suffering and crucifixion. Satan's influence was behind Judas's actions, leading to his ultimate regret. Overwhelmed by guilt, Judas returned the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests, confessing his betrayal but unable to alter the tragic course of events. Unable to bear the weight of guilt and under Satan's influence, Judas Iscariot took his own life. Despite being part of God's plan, Jesus acknowledged the severity of Judas's actions, stating that it would have been better for him not to have been born. The Son of Man indeed goes just as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been good for that man if he had never been born. Mark fourteen twenty one. 